Now at 6, St. Louis takes a major step toward curbing crime, and it all begins by cutting the ribbon on a new safe haven in South City. This is News 4 at 6. I'm Lauren Traeger. And I'm Corey Stark. Samantha has the night off. The Dunica Sobering Center is the first of its kind in Missouri. It sits near Gravoy and Chippewa in South City. Caroline Hecker is digging into how the center works and how it plays a big role in fighting crime, not just for the city, but our entire area. Caroline. Well, guys, the center will serve as a safe place for people who are intoxicated to be able to recover all while being medically monitored. So instead of throwing someone in jail to sober up or taking them to an emergency room, police will now have the option to take people to the center. Two, three. The opening of the Donica Sobering Support Center fills a critical gap in services the city says were going unmet. The center will offer 12 beds and be open 365 days a year, giving police officers an option other than a hospital or jail. Officers will now have a place to refer these particular clients 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, allowing us to save countless man hours, which in turn can be utilized to grapple with our violent crime challenges. Helping to treat people on the front end is much cheaper than incarceration, according to Governor Mike Parson. The project is a combination of state and local dollars, along with some private funding. Catching people on the front end that has a mil mental illness or has a drug or alcohol abuse, if you can catch it and stop it so they don't end up in prison. It's the most expensive place in the world to take care of people. Parson says battling St. Louis's crime problem is multifaceted and requires striking a balance between social services like the Sobering Support Center and law enforcement. This is a high crime rate area. I mean, the homicides rate, we got to figure out how to get it done. And I think it is a multiple approach. I don't think there's one thing that fits it all. I don't think you can fund all the money in social service and take your own change, nor do I think you can fund it all in law enforcement, things going to change. It's a combination of both. The center expects to serve nearly 4,000 people a year, freeing up police officers and health care workers to focus on those in need of their help. So right now, the center will only serve those adults that are being referred to them through police or someone that's being transferred from an emergency department to the center. So what does that mean? That means no walk-ups or walk-ins are allowed. Plus, anyone that ends up recovering at the center will then have transportation home guys to ensure that they are not left to just wander the streets. Certainly an interesting concept there, Caroline. But when it comes to fighting crime in the city, I know a couple of years ago, the governor actually deployed state troopers to help city officers. Where exactly does that program stand right now? Well, I wanted to check with the police department to see if that is actually still happening. The governor touched on it today when we were speaking with him. The police department does tell me that that effort is ongoing. Primarily, they say you'll see that uh, heightened prevalence of those highway patrol officers on weekends, especially in the evenings, particularly patrolling those highways that surround us. The governor also pointing to his office's work with the Urban League and a lot of funding that they've, he says they've been able to secure to allow them to flourish some of their social programs, guys. Fighting crime certainly an ongoing battle. Caroline, thank you very much.